Heather. Chairperson Leahy, Vice Chairperson Lysing, and members of the committee, thank you for spending your precious attention on this issue. My name is Daniel Pointer, a Purdue graduate and founder of Carbon Neutral Indiana. I'd like to tell you a story. My parents raised my sister and I in Auburn, Indiana. You probably know about their famous antique car parade. Every year, Auburn hosts the Parade of Classics. These are gorgeous cars with shiny chrome, long curves. When I was a kid, about 10 years old, I pulled a wagon along with the parade. In that wagon was a cooler full of pop. My competitors sold their pop for a dollar a can, so I priced mine for 75 cents. When older people saw a young entrepreneur, they gave me their dollar and said, keep the change. I learned a couple of things. One, pricing strategy is a thing. Two, most people are generous, some very generous. They want to do the right thing. And three, Hoosiers love entrepreneurs in the free market. This morning, we have an opportunity to explore a fun idea. It's an opportunity to leverage the free market and voluntary goodwill to satisfy a lot of needs at once. You'll hear how more and more companies in our backyard, like FedEx, Salesforce, General Motors, Toyota, Novartis, and others, are paying people to clean up their carbon trash, their unwanted carbon pollution. These companies measured how much carbon trash they create. Then they try to reduce it, but sometimes it's more cost effective to pay somebody else to clean it up. Now we're talking about an opportunity for Indiana, specifically an opportunity for Indiana farmers and Indiana forest owners. I was talking to the sustainability director of FedEx a few weeks ago. I'm sure you know they've invest, they're investing one and a half billion dollars in Indiana. So I asked him, how can we help FedEx succeed? He told me one thing, get more Indiana landowners plugged into carbon markets. Why? Well, FedEx wants to reduce their carbon footprint. It's just the right thing to do. And they're getting more and more pressure to do so from their customers, employees, and their investors. The problem, though, is we don't have electric airplanes yet. So FedEx wants to pay Indiana farmers. By implementing certain farming practices like no-till and cover crops, farmers can literally pull carbon out of the air and put it into the soil. And forest owners can do the same thing. This is even a way for the DNR to acquire land without putting that burden on taxpayers. Everybody wins. Companies reduce their carbon footprint, which is a growing liability. New money flows into Indiana. Farmers and forest owners get paid, and our soils get richer. But it's not just FedEx. Other corporations are investing big time. General Motors paid $5 million to a few universities, including Ball State, to help GM clean up their carbon trash. Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream and a few other companies paid school districts in Indiana, like one in Kokomo. And I know of at least two small companies in northern Indiana that are already investing about $50,000 a piece, $100,000 annually, in carbon projects outside of Indiana. And it's not even just companies. Households want to clean up their carbon trash, too. In fact, 20% are willing to pay $40 a month. That's over 500,000 Hoosier households. And even if just 5% of that 20% participated, that represents $12 million of demand from Hoosier households. That money should be flowing to Indiana farmers and forest owners. The world is changing. People and companies want to clean up their carbon trash. So I founded a nonprofit, Carbon Neutral Indiana, and we help households and businesses do just this. We've only existed for five months with no grant funding and all volunteer staff in the middle of a global pandemic and economic recession. We've already marketed and sold this idea to over 70 Hoosier households and businesses. Right now, we're supporting forest projects in Alaska because there are no verified projects here in Indiana. At $10 a ton, that's about $20,000 annually. The money should stay in Indiana. So that's the, that's the demand side, and it's the tip of the iceberg. The supply is already here in Indiana, too. There are at least 16 verified carbon projects here in Indiana, generating over 800,000 carbon offsets annually. At $10 a ton, that's $8 million a year of supply. The market is just about to take off. 
Steve Basco of Nature Bank is an expert in this market. I discovered him when the state of Hawaii had a similar meeting last year. They invited him in to educate them. He couldn't be here today, but he sent a letter and you should have the letter on your desks. It's from uh, the letterhead says Nature Bank. It says uh, attention chairperson Leahy and vice chairperson Lysing. I'd like to draw your attention to just a few items before I turn it over to the next person to testify. The first, on the, on the first page, um, Steve Basco has over a decade of experience in international compliance and voluntary markets. He's the managing director for Nature Bank, a global project developer specializing in land use carbon projects and nature based solutions. Uh, they also developed the world's largest forest carbon project called the Great Bear Forest Carbon Project. I'd also like to bring your attention to page two. There's a lot of good information in here. He's a world expert, but I'll just uh, be brief. On page two, in the middle of the page, you can see this important distinction between voluntary and regulated carbon markets. What we're talking about here today is a completely voluntary carbon market. It's also important to notice at the bottom of page two that voluntary and compliance markets can uh, coexist and often they influence one another in good ways. Uh, let me turn to page three. Actually, let's jump to four. So page four may be the most important page and it's important to take a look at it later. Some key figures, uh, the World Bank just put out a 2020 carbon market report they said that 45 jurisdictions and 25 subnationals around the world um, are participating in carbon markets with a combined market value of about $45 billion. And this was in 2019. But in addition to these jurisdictions, there are 15 subnational regions, almost 400 cities, over 700 multinational companies, and 16 global investor groups working towards achieving net zero emission targets. So these are the companies that are willing to buy Indiana carbon offsets. And you can hear the, the market fluctuates just like uh, bottles of wine fluctuate. You can get a bottle of wine for $2. You can buy a bottle of wine at auction for $50,000. Carbon offsets are no different. There's so many subtleties. But in general, 50% of the market can be valued around $10 a ton, which answers one of the committee uh, members' questions earlier. Um, and there's a lot of other good information in here, but I'll go ahead and, uh, in the interest of time, pass on to the next person. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, questions from committee? <clears throat> okay, thank you.